emergency situation? Well, you can just see the dress and that, you know, the coloring. The poncho looks bad. One of them's on the side. Okay, so we have got all of the fake rocks now concreted in, rebarred. Everything is nice and secure. You can see we have all of the slate work done behind me. So we've went ahead and started to fill the bottom with gravel. We also have our preliminary jet line. This will help with water circulation, not only here, but also all the way around into Woody's area down here. Give him one of these. Yeah. <laughs> not sure what that means, <laughs> but we gotta go. The next thing is we are going to get a frame rock right in here to help frame out this waterfall. So we've got Nick over there carefully maneuvering on the forklift, and we're gonna bring that rock in right here. Well, that beeping sound is defeat with the forklift. It did not have quite the turning radius or the reach that we were looking for to get the rock all the way out into here. So we are going to go get our mini excavator over here. So there's Nick, he's back. A little bit more uh, mobile of a piece of equipment. Right tool for the job. Okay, Nicholas, I can honestly say this is a first for me. I know you've worked with this, I think, one time before down at Franklin's, yeah, right? Barely. Faux rock skin, and this is what's going to kind of wrap around the back side. So this side faces out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, just thought we had it backwards. So that is the wooden template we're gonna use for our first rock skin wall. So before we cut another one, we just wanna make sure that that one fits in there right. We're happy with the cove that Chris's left leg is in, matches up well with the other wall over there. Once we've made sure it's good, then we gotta cut at least another one of these for the top, and then everything will get filled with two by fours, and then our skin wall will get attached to that. It looks good from here. Give him one of these. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you got cooking here, Helfrich? It's gonna be the template for the bottom. This is the exact same one going on top. And then if you can imagine two by fours. Two by fours. Give us something to actually attach those skins to. And then this will go up seven feet higher. That's the height of the skins. Yep. The remaining parts, because we have a 10 foot tall enclosure, will actually get like a little soffit or a basking ledge up above it for the monitor. Plate up there and just a nice warm spot for the monitor to sit. It looks awesome. You like how it's going so far? I love the look of it. Use, I think, of the artificial boulders in here. The piece of driftwood is awesome. My next most exciting part that we haven't got to yet. I, I really wanna see what the skins look like mm -hmm. once we get those up, but I cannot wait to get these windows Yeah. and play with these windows. I think when we get to the point of the windows, it's almost like plugging it in, yeah. like building a pond. Like the windows are gonna be the final thing we do. So from all different sides, kind of like our ponds, we wanna create a little bit of mystery. The viewing area from here is much different experience than the viewing area from there. I mean, how you get to see the entire pond this way. Yeah. And then we got the deep spot over here. So mm -hmm. you're gonna see probably some fish and stuff schooling around over in here that you couldn't on that side because the log blocks it. <laughs> Not sure what that means, <laughs> but we gotta go. Folks, we made incredible progress yesterday. Basically, incredible. We, incredible. What we're super impressed with, Nick, Brian, and myself really, really love how this fake skin wall got installed. And you can see this little crevasse behind me. That's where that waterfall is going to come into, drop into this pooling area, which is on top of the bog filter, and then a stream which will cascade down and through here. This is up, this kind of sets the framework for the rest of the enclosure. Now that we know that our most interesting, most difficultly constructed because of the curves and everything like that, everything else is gonna be much more subtle curves or even straight walls back there. So we wanted to get this in and then work this way and this way off of this. 
What Nick's working on right now, which is goal one for today, or task number one, is to build a deck or a platform surface for the monitor to come out, kind of bask on, sit on, but also give us something to stand on when we need to get in here and service or maintain this water feature, feed the animals, that kind of stuff. Step two is going to be getting the wall that goes along the back of the enclosure to this tree, to this wall, get that connected, then We'll get another fake skin wall in coming this way out in front of our skimmer. We'll have to notch out the six by six, which is part of the wall underneath the liner there to create our skimmer opening. And then on the back side, Nick, why don't you show them? Yeah, absolutely. So this back side right here, we'll have our, obviously our exterior walls that go straight up here. On top of that, however, we're gonna make a little basking area so that Mr. Monitor can hang out right there and bask. We'll have maybe heat lamps up there, probably some slate so that rock can heat up up there. And then all this back here will be closed off eventually, but we will still have access to this so that we'll be able to get in here and wash this bog out every year so that that stays nice and clean. We should be pretty busy. We gotta get to work so we can get this stuff rocking and rolling. Ooh, that looks good. <laughs> So I almost have this deck totally framed out. I know Chris has been working over here. What even is that, Chris? What is that? It's uh, the latrine, okay? So when the monitor and you know the turtles have to go number two, this is what they use. All joking aside, we needed some area in this pond, drop a clean out pump down in the very, very bottom the same way we would in a normal outdoor pond to draw all the water down, empty it completely, get all the crap and debris. So this will help with the clean out process. We didn't really have that anywhere accessible in the pond itself and you can't exactly get to the skimmer very easily. So we need to get that pump in the lowest portion of the pond as possible. So because all, this whole pond is vaulted with aqua blocks underneath to create these different elevations, the easiest way to do that would be just to core out an area in one of the aqua blocks. And what I found in back was a piece of ADS pipe, 12 inch diameter. So a clean out pump will fit down in here nicely. I just cut a couple slots in at the bottom to allow water to get in. And I just traced it around on top of the aqua block, dropped it in. Bam, this will get covered with a fake rock. We'll end up foaming around it, foam this concrete cloth back around. We want the concrete cloth to be as sealed up as possible so we don't get a bunch of water shooting up where we don't want it to because we really want to control the circulation jets of the water being pumped through the bottom of these aqua blocks. That is almost relatable to our pondless waterfall vault. Correct, it's very, very similar to the idea of our pondless waterfall vault, which is where the pump sits. The difference between just using a piece of pipe like this versus our pump vault is the pump vault actually extends down eight inches below the depth of the bottom of the aqua box so that you can purpose 100% of the water that's in that reservoir. The ADS pipe will only allow us to get within the bottom inch or so of the bottom of this. So there'll still be some water that it won't be able to suck out of here and get completely drained down. The only draw back. The only draw. Back. 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 Hi guy just came back and said that our last shipment of fish is now in. Um, I think they've been on the road for a couple of days. Sounds like they're super stressed. What do you think, Hi guy? Uh, Emergency situation? Well, you can just see the, the stress and that you know the coloring and the, the red fins. The concha looks bad. One of them's on a side. Now normally we would acclimate them by the temperature, but there's so much ammonia in the, the water now. Day later than they were supposed to get here. We're just gonna put them right in. So they look okay right now, but let's just. Try not to dump a lot of ammonia water in here. Yep. Woo! That stinks. Wow. Those are some yeah. pretty amazing That's fish. That's a beautiful toncho. But you can see how red it is. Yeah. You want a second set of hands? Yeah. So the coronavirus prevented us from getting our delivery yesterday. So these fish have been in 36 hours in these bags. You can see all the pink in that fish. Okay. Woo! And now we'll get rid of this water. All right. I think they're going to be okay. So within three minutes of these guys getting here from FedEx, they're in the water right away. Normally, like I said, we would float them for a little bit, but that ammonia is so high, we want to get them into highly oxygenated, biologically established water. Beautiful fish though, huh, Chris? Mm -hmm. That's our black koi for good luck. Oh. And there's a platinum old guy. 
that will be a lot wider in a few days. All right, guys, you made it. Thank you, uh, KoiTrips.com and Brian at Fitzwater Ponds. Oh, there it is. All right, got help for chin. Nick, looks like you are done, dude. Check it off the list. Freaking looks killer. 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 Nice job. Brian is making good headway down here on the slate work. We have this wall built that's going to span all the way across. We got the skimmer finished. So the liner is draped up over the top of the weir opening for this uh, skimmer. And it goes down and then it comes back up. Next step is going to be putting this long wall. We have the door built in that's gonna go between the tree and the rock. As soon as we get that wall up, we can start with our skin just along here. And then we will continue coming back this way. Brian, I know is excited. Oh my God. You look, yep, yep. Oh my. 30 pieces of slate. You did, you did really good. <laughs> you did really, really good over here. Slate work is cool, but it's super, super time consuming. Hmm. So now that we've got Nick's good side on camera, Oh, there you go. All right, there we are. We are cleaning up. We uh, we ran out of lumber. It's a good stopping point for the day. We got a lot done, really. Tomorrow, I think we focus on the exterior stuff. As long as we don't have to do any more framing on the inside of the pond, mm -hmm. I think we just close this thing off and get it ready for windows. We ran out of lumber today, which means that we made, again, incredible progress. Basically. Basically, we used every single two by six we had to frame these exterior walls. They are not only going to wrap the outside and frame out the outside, but they're also structural because we have our curved walls that have the fake rock attached to these walls. So they're tied back into there. You can see some of the support pieces and that's just to help keep everything nice and square. These exterior walls that Nick was talking about lagged into the six by six frame going all the way around. We will end up going back that way and then making a hard right turn to finish that off and that will tie into the steel wall right there. So that'll get more skin. And then this in through here. So you can see we've got the last of our interior walls. This is all cedar, so it's not gonna rot and it's not treated. So it's not gonna release any of the bad stuff that they have in treated lumber into the water column. We've got this wall that we'll wrap with a skin. We've got our opening for our skimmer cut right there. And you can see we used a aquablock panel from one of our small aquablocks and screwed it to the back side of that timber wall. That's gonna prevent any of the turtles or the potentially the monitor getting his fat head stuck in the skimmer back there. We are in great shape for tomorrow. What do you think, Nick? Good shape for tomorrow. And we made good progress today. You killed it. Later, bud.